Welcome to today's video, where we delve deep into the enigmatic regime of North Korea, uncovering the hidden truths behind its leadership, particularly focusing on Kim Jong-un and exploring the intriguing dynamics within his family. Get ready to be shocked as we unveil astonishing details that will leave you questioning the extent of power and control in this totalitarian state. Kim Jong-un, born into a family deeply entrenched in North Korean politics, is the third son of Kim Jong-il, the country's second supreme leader. From a young age, Kim Jong-un was groomed to be his father's successor. Despite facing challenges in his path to power, marked by familial intrigue and tragedy, his elder half-brother, Kim Jong-nam, once viewed as the favored successor, fell out of favor following a scandalous incident in 2001. This event, coupled with his eventual demise in Malaysia in 2017, underscored the ruthlessness of the regime's internal power struggles. Insights from Kim Jong-un's former personal chef, Kenji Fujimoto, shed further light on the dynamics within the ruling family. Fujimoto portrayed Kim Jong-un as the chosen heir, favored by his father over his elder brother, Kim Jong-chul, attributing this preference to Jong-un's perceived resemblance to his father and his physical prowess. Despite his lack of prior military experience, Kim Jong-un's trajectory toward leadership became apparent with his designation as the successor by Kim Jong-il in 2009. Subsequent promotions within the military hierarchy and extensive propaganda campaigns solidified his position as the future leader. Reports surfaced indicating efforts to foster a cult of personality around Kim Jong-un, akin to his predecessors. Allegedly, North Korean citizens were encouraged to sing hymns extolling his virtues, further cementing his status within the regime. Kim Jong-un's marriage to Ri sol Ju, believed to be in her early 20s, caught public attention, but the circumstances surrounding their union remain shrouded in mystery. Reports suggest it was hastily arranged by Kim Jong-il after suffering a stroke in 2008, highlighting the lack of agency for Ri sol Ju. As the First Lady of North Korea, Ri sol Ju faces numerous restrictions and limitations, including strict control over her public appearances, wardrobe, and even personal life. She is not allowed to meet her family, her appearances are strictly regulated, and her movements are restricted, emphasizing the oppressive nature of the regime. Furthermore, Ri sol Ju's pregnancies were shrouded in secrecy, with the regime exerting pressure on her to bear a son. This gender bias highlights the patriarchal nature of the ruling family and the control exerted over her reproductive choices. Kim Yo Jong, Kim Jong Un's sister, has emerged as a key figure instrumental in crafting her brother's public image and involved in decision making processes. Her rise to prominence signifies a generational replacement within the ruling elite, reinforcing the importance of familial ties in North Korean politics. Despite North Korea's economic developments and diplomatic engagements under Kim Jong-un's leadership, the regime's aggressive stance and human rights abuses continue to attract international scrutiny and condemnation. The regime's control over information and suppression of dissent maintain internal cohesion, but ongoing tensions with key global players and human rights concerns cast a shadow over Kim Jong-un's leadership. The complexities of North Korea's political landscape under Kim Jong-un's rule highlight the oppressive nature of the regime and the lengths it will go to maintain power. Despite economic developments and diplomatic engagements, human rights abuses and international tensions remain significant challenges, shaping North Korea's uncertain future on the global stage. However, let's delve deeper into the economic aspect of Kim Jong-un's rule. Despite North Korea's image as an isolated and impoverished state, Kim Jong-un has presided over notable developments in the country's economy. Under Kim Jong-un's leadership, there has been a noticeable expansion of the consumer economy within North Korea. This includes an increase in the availability of consumer goods and services, as well as the establishment of markets where people can purchase a wider range of products. The introduction of new products and improved infrastructure signifies a shift towards a more consumer-oriented economy. Additionally, Kim Jong-un has focused on various construction projects aimed at modernizing and developing the country. These projects include the construction of new buildings, roads, and infrastructure, particularly in urban areas like Pyongyang. The skyline of the capital city has transformed with the addition of modern high-rise buildings and architectural landmarks. Furthermore, North Korea has made efforts to attract tourists and showcase its cultural heritage. The regime has invested in the development of tourist attractions, including theme parks, museums, and cultural sites. 
These initiatives aim to promote North Korea as a tourist destination and provide visitors with a curated experience of the country's history and culture. Despite these economic developments, North Korea remains heavily sanctioned by the international community, which limits its ability to engage in global trade and access foreign investment. The regime's pursuit of nuclear weapons and ballistic missile technology further exacerbates its isolation and economic challenges, as sanctions are imposed in response to its provocative actions. In addition to economic developments, Kim Jong-un's leadership has also been characterized by diplomatic engagements, albeit with mixed results. In an attempt to alleviate tensions and foster diplomatic relations, Kim Jong-un engaged in unprecedented summits with South Korean President Moon Jae-in and former U.S. President Donald Trump. These historic meetings, while initially met with cautious optimism, ultimately failed to produce substantial progress towards denuclearization and lasting peace on the Korean Peninsula. The intricate web of relationships on the peninsula is further complicated by the involvement of regional powers like China and Russia, each with its own vested interests and strategic goals. Despite international efforts to isolate North Korea through sanctions and diplomatic pressure, Kim Jong-un has managed to maintain a degree of stability within the country. The regime's control over information and strict enforcement of ideological conformity help suppress dissent and maintain internal cohesion. Kim Jong-un has portrayed these weapons as essential for the country's defense and a deterrent against external aggression, further heightening tensions in the region. The regime's aggressive stance and human rights abuses have drawn widespread condemnation from human rights organizations and the international community. Kim Jong-un's leadership has been marked by economic developments, diplomatic engagements, and ongoing challenges, including human rights abuses and tensions surrounding North Korea's nuclear ambitions. The regime's control over information and strict enforcement of ideological conformity help maintain internal stability but ongoing international scrutiny and condemnation highlight the complexities and uncertainties of North Korea's future on the global stage. As we reflect on the complexities of Kim Jong-un's regime, it's essential to consider the broader implications of North Korea's policies and actions on the international stage. The regime's pursuit of nuclear weapons and ballistic missile technology has raised alarms among global powers, leading to increased tensions and diplomatic challenges. North Korea's status as a nuclear armed state poses significant security risks, not only to its neighbors, but also to the broader international community. The regime's erratic behavior and unpredictable decision-making process have further fueled concerns about the potential for conflict and instability in the region. Efforts to address North Korea's nuclear program through diplomacy have yielded limited results, with negotiations often stalling due to disagreements over terms and commitments. The regime's insistence on retaining its nuclear arsenal as a deterrent against perceived threats complicates efforts to achieve meaningful progress towards denuclearization. Moreover, North Korea's human rights abuses, including political repression, forced labor camps, and restrictions on freedom of expression, have drawn condemnation from human rights organizations and the international community. The regime's systematic suppression of dissent and strict enforcement of ideological conformity underscore the oppressive nature of the regime and its disregard for basic human rights. Despite these challenges, there have been moments of diplomatic engagement and dialogue aimed at addressing the long-standing tensions on the Korean Peninsula. The historic summits between Kim Jong-un and South Korean President Moon Jae-in, as well as former U.S. President Donald Trump, represented significant steps towards reducing tensions and fostering diplomatic relations. Moving forward, it is essential for the international community to maintain a united front in addressing the challenges posed by North Korea's nuclear program and human rights abuses. Diplomatic engagement and dialogue remain crucial tools in seeking a peaceful resolution to the long-standing tensions on the Korean Peninsula. At the same time, it is imperative to continue applying pressure on the North Korean regime through targeted sanctions and diplomatic isolation to compel it to change its behavior. Efforts to promote human rights and empower the North Korean people to demand greater accountability from their government must also remain a priority. In conclusion, the complexities of North Korea's regime under Kim Jong-un's leadership present significant challenges for the international community. While diplomatic engagement and dialogue offer hope for progress, the regime's pursuit of nuclear weapons and human rights abuses continue to pose serious threats to regional stability and global security. Only through concerted efforts and collective action,
can we hope to address these challenges and work towards a peaceful and prosperous future for the Korean Peninsula?